and a 10 Painkiller Jane. First appearing in 22 Brides number 1, Painkiller Jane is an event comic character created for a 5 issue miniseries, but then went on to cross over with characters like the Punisher and Hellboy. Jane Vasco started out as an undercover cop trying to infiltrate the mob. After gaining the trust of the mob boss, she is sent to meet a rival gang member to pass on a message, but unbeknownst to her, they planted a bomb on her, blowing it up as soon as she meets the member. He somehow survives and is able to revive her, while also giving her the superhuman ability to regenerate in the process. She then decides to leave her life as a cop behind, becoming the vigilante painkiller Jane. While this may be the origin listed on most websites, a different origin was presented in the first Painkiller Jane miniseries, and the Dynamite Comics miniseries contains references to both versions. Her powers make her indestructible, being able to heal wounds in less than a minute. She has recovered from gunshots, explosions, chemical weapons, axes to the spine, and even a shotgun to the face. And if that's not the description of immortality, I don't know what is. And at 9, Batman. Batman isn't really immortal. He's a regular guy who has insane martial arts skills, and he's the world's greatest detective. But he's been around since 1939. That's... 80 years. And while it may be a long time for the bat, he's still looking good for his age, even though he should be looking like Bruce Wayne from the CW Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. First appearing in Detective Comics number 27, Batman may not be your typical version of Immortal, but it's 100% sure that under no circumstance will Batman ever be killed off. Permanently, I should say. Unless it's an alternate version of him and not the main one that is bringing in the major bucks. Major bucks? The only way they would kill off Batman is if they needed the publicity or if everyone stopped reading, but nobody's gonna stop reading Batman. He He's immortal because he brings in a huge amount of money. He's got like that protagonist armor, like the solid armor at that. And it ain't Deadpool. Deadpool is one hell of a disease, and I mean that as in you'll never truly be rid of him. He's like an STI. Sure your symptoms may go down and you won't be able to spread it, but it will flare up again every once in a while. First appearing in the New Mutants number 98, Wade Winston Wilson is meant to be a parody of Slade Wilson, and they do this in the best way. The wisecracking, death loving merc with a mouth is able to, like Painkiller Jane, restore any wound within a matter of seconds, or longer if it's a whole appendage, like a hand. This ability also depends on his mental state. If he's happy, awake, and alert, it works at its best. His healing factor is strong enough that he has survived complete incineration and decapitation. And even his head was able to be its own person as Headpool. He was able to regrow his head as well after it was pulverized by the Hulk in Deadpool Kills the Universe, a graphic novel. If you can do that, where can I sign up? I can look like an avocado had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado on a topographical map of Utah. Number 7, Maestro. The Incredible Hulk has certainly been through the ringer in his decorated career, but few versions of the character are the living embodiment of that fact, like the Maestro. An alternate version of Bruce Banner from an apocalyptic future, the Maestro is far more intense and complex than his Earth 616 counterpart. The best way to describe Maestro is to say that he is basically a smarter, older, villainous version of Dr. Bruce Banner with all the powers and abilities of the original, but with a touch more nuclear radiation. Now, I don't know if you know, but the Hulk is actually immortal. As a gamma mutate with a connection to the below place, Bruce Banner and Hulk learned he possessed the ability to commandeer his own recovery rate. One time, Hulk had been pulled apart and put into several different jars, only to literally compel his own body to come back together by sheer force of will. The Hulk, and by extension Maestro, is capable of regenerating damaged or destroyed areas of his entire body with much greater speed and efficiency than any of us can do. The Hulk was also able to systematically regenerate his internal organs and tissues and was also able to literally rip off a large fraction of his own head, allowing it to completely regrow. The Maestro himself was able to molecularly rebuild his own body after being atomized. The Hulk has survived to be the only living human being left on the entire Earth in Hulk the End. So, immortality for this guy is a big old check mark. Number six. Agatha Harkness. Like a few of these villains, when we first met Agatha Harkness in Fantastic Four number 95 from October 1969, she was already elderly. She started out as the nanny for the newly born Franklin Richards, and using her magical powers, she even saved the Fantastic Four from the Frightful Four, a handful of other villains, and also helped Franklin when his powers first started to emerge. But she went on to have an interesting relationship with the Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff, but also her mother, Natalia. Maximoff. That's because this sweet nanny, Agatha, is actually an incredibly ancient sorcerer who was around to remember the sinking of Atlantis nearly 18,500 years ago. And she was probably the most powerful of the original witches during the Salem Witch Trials, an event that she actually supported as she thought it would cull the weak magic users who held them all collectively back. 
While Agatha is not technically immortal, her use of magic coupled with her extended lifespan has made her basically the same thing. Number 5. Kang the Conqueror Kang is a little bit of an interesting pick for this list as he totally can be stopped and has been multiple times. Thanks to the advanced time period he comes from, Nathaniel Richards has an increased lifespan, making him look like 40 years old when he's actually 7 years old. That's fine, that doesn't make him unstoppable or immortal. What makes him immortal is a couple of things. For starters, as most people know, Kang has a huge relationship with time. A version of this guy exists at almost all moments of the time stream, and not just one version of him, as there have been Kangs from different universes that have shown up as well. So not only can Nathaniel Richards show up at any point in the time stream in any of his numerous identities that all have their own long history, but his alternate universe versions are almost always set to make an appearance in his place. And then, on top of that, until recently, Nathaniel had the ability to transfer his consciousness to another body whenever he did actually pass away. So, yeah, he's kind of immortal. Number four, that which endures. That which endures is basically like a bacteria. All the way back at the very beginning of life, billions of years ago, when the first cells split on Earth and multicellular life forms began to exist, that which endures attached itself to the resulting organism and has been multiplying and sticking with whatever species it determined was the most dominant in order to ensure its own survival. It basically chooses which species are successful and a small part of it exists in every member of that species. At first, that was dinosaurs, and then eventually, humans. Around every 100,000 years, that which endures will just pop up in a large number of that species, look around, and see if any other species is beginning to come out on top, which is when it would jump ship to that new species. When it did this in Avengers West Coast number 47 in 1989, it noticed that there was a super cool and powerful evolution in Homo sapiens known as Homo superior, aka the mutant. That which endures chose the Scarlet Witch as the first mutant it would try to jump to, using her to destroy Homo sapiens. Luckily though, the Great Lakes Initiative alongside Vision were able to stop this from happening, and we haven't really heard anything of this semi-sentient organism ever since. Number 3. The Beast the ninja clan known as the Hand has had many run-ins with different heroes over the years, but none of those heroes have had as much interaction with the shadowy group as Daredevil. His mentor, Stick, and his sometimes girlfriend, Elektra, have history with the clan as well, and he's never been particularly fond of them. But when he seemed to secure control over the clan, he decided to put their skills to good use. He moved them to Hell's Kitchen and started up a headquarters and prison known as Shadowland. He changed the Hand into what he thought was a force for good. But as his time with the hand went on, he seemed to be the one who was changing, becoming more aggressive and drastic with his methods of crime fighting. He started to butt heads with other heroes and even became responsible for the passing of his adversary, Bullseye, again. Now it turns out that this brutal new daredevil was actually being possessed by an ancient demon called the Beast, who is the source of the Hand's mystical powers and has been the reason the clan was as morally dubious as it is. Daredevil was secretly manipulated by the Snake Root, a small faction of the Hand that worshipped the Beast. They manipulated Daredevil into undergoing the ritual of the Black Flower. So when Daredevil removed the problem of Bullseye from existence, it completed the ritual and the Beast possessed him and corrupted the people of Hell's Kitchen until until Iron Fist exorcised the demon from that. Number two, Uranus. As you might be able to gather from their name, Eternals are, well, eternal meaning they are immortal, and some of them are scary powerful. The Eternal known as Uranus first ever appeared in Marvel What If number 24 in September of 1980, in a story that explained the origins of the Eternals. In this story, Uranus is trying to convince his brother, Kronos, that the Eternals should use their massive amounts of power to just take over the world. He believed the Eternals would best fulfill their duties if they exterminated both the Deviants and the humans on Earth, all life outside the universe as well, and imprison the Celestials. Celestials, but his brothers, Kronos and Oceanus, luckily disagreed, sparking the eternal civil war. The war culminated in his defeat and banishment to the planet Uranus. Surprise though, this isn't what actually happened. The Uranus who was banished to another planet was actually a clone of the real Uranus who was banished to the exclusion, as he tied his own passing to the destruction of Earth, meaning if he goes, 
we all go. Which is why he was sent to the exclusion, only able to leave an hour at a time at the discretion of the Prime Eternal. Most recently, Uranus was used by Druid to wipe out a massive amount of the mutant population when a war between the Eternals and the mutants broke out. And finally, in at number one today is Shadow King. Amal Farouk was a pretty nasty mutant that Charles Xavier had a run in with in Cairo way back in the day before he started the X-Men. Amal attacked Xavier and then tried to convince Charles to partner with him in his nefarious ways. Luckily, Charles refused, challenged Farouk to a psychic duel, and won, which seemed to take Farouk's life, and he moved on to create the X-Men in order to combat evil mutants in the world like Farouk himself. What no one knew until about 150 issues later is that Farouk was actually merged with a multiversal manifestation of the dark side of human consciousness who had been possessing various individuals since the dawn of human history called the Shadow King. Years and years later, the Shadow King and Farouk, who had been floating around in the astral plane, made a move to attack Xavier again, taking over the new mutant Karma due to her own mutant ability of possession, making her vulnerable. He was eventually defeated, but this multiversal entity would go on to possess a whole number of powerful people, mainly telepaths like Marvel Girl and Psylocke, whose energy the Shadow King would feed off of. But there have been many others who have been possessed, corrupted, and misled by this powerful telepathic entity in not only the 616 universe, but all over the multiverse. Number 10, The Spectre. Let's start off with a different type of immortality, one coming from a character who was never mortal to begin with. Kinda. The Spectre first appeared in War Fun Comics number 52 back in 1940. Now the Spectre because of this dates all the way back to the Golden Age. At first the Spectre was Jim Corrigan, a man whose soul was denied entry into the afterlife by a being known as the Voice, and is instead sent back to fight evil. This however was after he was murdered. He would create a costume and call himself the Spectre. However, the version fans would become more familiar with and who would become the more iconic was the Silver Age version, which would tweak the Spectre to a spirit of vengeance, who would possess hosts and have them act as a vessel for delivering his brutal brand of justice. This way, you could still also have the Jim Corrigan backstory, but the Spectre could also possess other characters, like for example, Hal Jordan. He was the Spectre after he snapped and killed the entire Green Lantern Corps and Sinestro. But it's fine, it was Parallax. I mean, you'd think a cosmic being would know that, but it doesn't matter, except the retcon, so no one has to feel bad. The Spectre has waned in popularity in the modern era and isn't seen anywhere near as much as he used to be. Number 9, Franklin Richards, the son of Reed Richards and Sue Storm Richards of the Fantastic Four. Franklin possesses a terrifying Omega level power set that has only grown over the years. Franklin first appeared in Fantastic Four Annual number 6 back in 1968 and only just became a teenager. Happy birthday! Now, Franklin's immortality is implied because while you'd have to jump through some hoops to explain it via his power set. But he has been placed on the same level as the Celestials and depicted as one of the last beings alive at the end of the universe, just chilling with Galactus. The cosmic set have already taken notice of Franklin because he can essentially do anything. Because of this, he is a very desired player on all sides because he's also so dangerous. Hence why in canon at the time of this recording, the mutant separatist movement wants him on their side and not allied with his human metapowered parents or mutate powered. He has been shown in certain future timelines to be able to kill Celestials, so in short, Franklin Richards is one to sit up and take notice of. It almost makes his superhero name Powerhouse sound cool. Almost. Number 8. The Hulk The Hulk is currently at the time of this recording in a comic called The Immortal Hulk. And it means what it says, the Hulk is immortal. And this isn't the only time he has been depicted as such. In the very depressing storyline The End, he was shown to be the last person on Earth, utterly alone after his counterpart Bruce Banner died. Hulk is loneliness there is. In The Immortal Hulk, Banner cannot die properly and instead is dragged back to life by the Hulk if his form is killed. The transformations in this comic are depicted as monstrous and Cronenberg-esque. And the punishment the Hulk can take is immense, such as having his whole body cut up and separated into jars. This is while his mind stays intact and he can just watch what's happening to him. There are some truly horrifying prospects attached to proper immortality. The run started off as a really solid horror and then kind of started diving into multiple personalities and a companion who wanted to be the Hulk because he was allowed to be angry. Mm. Remember when the Hulk was sent to space? How about his friends and allies and how they fear him and never really trust him? How about how he lives life drifting from place to place? How he's a danger to people that love him? The right to be angry. 
Okay. Number seven, Icarus. I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention one Eternal on this list. Eternals are known for their immortality. I mean, it's kinda in the name, Eternal. We call them eternal because they are. They have lived on Earth for 1 million years at this point or more, Icarus included. They are beings who were created by the Celestials, but whose purpose remained a great mystery in the comics for a long time. Initially though, it seemed that the Celestials had created them to kind of be Earth's heroes, but also because they kind of enjoyed messing with species on other worlds. Which was exactly what they were doing with humanity when they created both the Eternals and their initial sworn enemies, the Deviants. Icarus, like himself, is often thought of as being the Superman equivalent of the group. Icarus is well known for his durability, strength, flight, and energy manipulation and energy beams, including heat vision as a form of. Icarus is strong enough to take on Thanos one on one and also possesses the ability to heal himself. Like other Eternals, he also has the capability to teleport, though he actually prefers not to do that, and he possesses low level psionic abilities that allow him to communicate telepathically as well as more advanced telekinetic abilities. Number 6, Supergirl. Like her cousin Kal-El, Supergirl is often perceived as being basically immortal. In Future State, we saw an alternate future where Kara left Earth and lived well into the future. At the end of her Future State limited series, Kara zor Superwoman, Supergirl did inevitably die, but we don't really know what from. It could have eventually been that she succumbed to old age after living well into the future and beyond, or it could be that she died protecting the eternal garden and community there that she created and had fostered. I would err on the side of the latter just because because of how immortal Kara already seemed in that series. And that's not the only alternate reality where we've seen Kryptonians living well into the future, virtually untouched by age. There have been countless other realities, including that of DC 1 million, where we've seen heroes like Superman live well beyond normal years, becoming basically a sun-powered god. So if this is true for Clark based on his physiology, it must also be a possibility for Kara as well. Number 5. Wonder Woman Wonder Woman is still a woman that can be killed, but she has also been known as a demigod in the comics before, with one origin for her making her the daughter of Hippolyta, the queen of Amazons, and Zeus, a god of Olympus. Really, the god of Olympus. More recently, during the events of Dark Knight's death metal, Diana was also raised up to become an omnipotent god amidst the stars, transcended into an otherworldly being and leaving our earthly plane behind. At least for a while. Diana would get a glimpse into a potential future, giving us the future state line, world, and event. Wonder Woman is known for being one of the fiercest and strongest fighters amongst the Amazons and in the world of DC besides. Number 4, Cersei. Probably one of the most powerful Eternals around, and definitely one of the few with the greatest staying power in the comics, is Cersei. So she is not only immortal as an Eternal, but also immortal in terms of her appearance in the comics. Cersei is introduced to us as one of the members of the Eternals who most loves humanity in the MCU film, Eternals. And the same can be said for her in the comics. There she is also known as one of the most sociable Eternals, who also appreciates a really good party. In fact, when she was tricked into believing she was human, this was kind of what her whole world centered around. She became like all about parties. When it comes to her power levels, Cersei is often seen as specializing in the power of transmutation. In the comics, this has never been restricted to non-organic matter either, and also gives Cersei the power to heal. As an Eternal, she not only possesses this power, but also has complete control over every molecule of her being, making her quite durable and quite hard to kill. Even when Eternals are killed as well, they are resurrected, meaning they can never really die. Not only that, but Cersei can fly, teleport, and has super strength, and is telepathic and telekinetic. She's really got a lot of powers. <laughs> like most Eternals. That is something that I feel like we didn't really see in the movie, but in the comics, they're all pretty OP. Number 3, Hulk. Hulk is definitely one of the most powerful heroes around in Marvel Comics. Often he is well known for his massive amount of strength and ability to smash or destroy just about anything he sets his mind to wrecking. Lately, however, we saw a deep dive into the character of the Hulk and Bruce Banner, who are also often often described as being two separate beings kind of sharing one existence. In Immortal Hulk we also learn not only that Hulk is extremely complex, but also that he's well, you may have guessed it, immortal. Granted, this very revelation was something pulled from his original origin, where it was initially explained that at night the Hulk would basically take over and because of this, whenever night fell, if Bruce Banner had been killed, then Hulk would be resurrected, bringing Bruce back with him. If you are a Hulk fan and you haven't yet read Immortal Hulk, by the way, it's definitely a must read, so go do that. And you'll see what I'm talking about with all this immortal stuff, if you didn't already know. 
because I feel like, you know, if you've been a Hulk fan for a long time, then you probably were like, I mean, it makes sense. Number two, Jean Grey. Jean has died a lot. And I mean, a lot. And yet, she always comes back. If that isn't immortality, I do not know what is. Even when she has been dead for years, she still returns. A big part of what makes her so indestructible is how much the Phoenix Force loves her and often sees her as its preferred host. I guess except for the whole Phoenix tournament thing. That that really threw my whole understanding of the Jean Phoenix connection for a loop. As a superhero, Jean is one of the most powerful around, but often chooses to show restraint when it comes to her abilities, unless she is really needed to set things right. She's just kind of too OP as well. She is an omega level telepath and an extremely powerful telekinetic. Number 1, Superman. One of the most immortal of the immortals out there and one of the most powerful is Superman, who has been established as immortal as long as he's under a yellow sun. Granted his immortality is a little bit conditional. But when it comes to being a powerhouse, Superman is undisputedly one of the best and most established in comics today. I mean, they kind of had to nail down his powers and give him weaknesses to make his struggles more grounded. That's how unstoppable he initially was. Back when his superpowers were basically whatever he needed them to be in order to save the day and solve problems. Superman has also died before, but has pretty much always come back. And following the death of Superman, we also learn that due to Kryptonian technology, even this publicized and sensationalized death would most definitely not be a permanent thing. A very powerful factor that Superman also possesses when it comes to his immortality is how popular he is, evidently. So it'd be really hard to kill Superman because we'd all be like, no! No one would accept it. We'd all be like just tearing our hair out and beating our chest. It'd be like unacceptable. Coming in at number 10 today is Ultron. How can you really pass away if you were never technically alive to begin with? Over time, Ultron has definitely taken on more squishy bodies, like when he became half Hank Pym. But for the most part, Ultron as a villain has been pretty much entirely unkillable, if you could even describe him that way. A large part of this has to do with his program transmitter. Located in his head cavity, the program transmitter can project Ultron's entire 3.2 terabyte memory and personality system into some computer systems. He can beam part or all of his programming into remote locations such as computers or alternate robotic bodies and has used this ability to create and control entire armies of himself, to move himself into other bodies if he's destroyed, and he's even used it to implant directives into his own creations to rebuild Ultron if he is ever actually destroyed. But that alone is a pretty hard thing enough to do because normally Ultron's outer shell is made entirely of adamantium, one of the strongest metals in the entire Marvel Universe. On top of that though, Ultron is almost always improving himself, upgrading his body, programming and abilities while also spreading his influence further and deeper into the cosmos. Number 9, The One Below All. The One Below All is a relatively recent addition to the comics, but the idea of the entity isn't, as we have known about the one above all for a while, and his mere existence begs the question of who inhabits the opposite side of the spectrum. Thanks to the Immortal Hulk storyline, we now know it is utterly terrifying. He resides in the below place, and his power has been manifesting itself for decades in the form of gamma mutates like the Hulk. In the story, we do get brief glimpses of what could actually happen if the embodiment of destruction and nothingness were to be set loose on the multiverse. Basically, the one below all completely takes over the body of the immortal Hulk, and using this body, he brings an end to the current version of the multiverse, destroying literally everything and everyone over billions of years, including the very essence of life and the multiverse itself. So that when the multiverse is rebirthed into its new version, it is the last time it can truly even happen. With the Hulk slash one below all slash breaker of worlds consuming everything to grow to a massive planet planetary scale, wiping out all of existence. But thanks to some time slash reality traveling bugs, this does not come to pass. But it could, and that's all you need to know. Number 8, Apocalypse. If it wasn't for his goal of mutant domination and evolution, Apocalypse would vaporize the X-Men whenever he wanted to. And even if that wasn't how he did it, he has the capacity to wipe out the X-Men in a whole handful of ways. For starters, Apocalypse is what is called an external. These are beings, mostly mutants, who are immortal, share a psychic connection, and who can revive themselves. 
So he can just never be permanently taken down, and he has been around for about 5,000 years. Apocalypse's original mutant ability was to be able to control his own molecular structure, but over time, with the mentality of survival of the fittest, he has enhanced his abilities and even gained new ones through the use of celestial technology, celestial armor, and at least two techno-organic viruses. He can do a lot with his molecular manipulation, including heal himself and turn his limbs into simple melee weapons, but also technologically complex weapons like plasma cannons. But I think the most impressive thing he can do is consciously and subconsciously grant himself a huge amount of mutant powers at will. That makes him too much for most heroes to handle already, and we haven't even talked about his celestial energy manipulation, his psionic abilities, or any of his countless horsemen of the apocalypse, all of whom were given power boosts by this unstoppable mutant. Number seven, we've got Anti-Monitor. Yes, this villain appears a lot on these powerful villain super lists, but I couldn't ignore him on this one even if I tried. His influence in the comics is immense, but what places him in this list is primarily his near infinite age. This guy was born in the early days of the cosmos, lived for over nine billion years in a dormant state, and even fought a battle with his counterpart, Monitor, for a million years. It's hard enough for most beings to live that long, let alone be in a constant battle the whole time. And on top of all this, he's also just proven to be nearly impossible to kill. Even when he's vanquished for good, he isn't really killed but instead broken up into molecules and scattered through the universe. And he had to be punched into a star to make that happen. By Superman from Earth 2. With the help of Darkseid, Superboy Prime, Dr. Light, and Heroic Lex Luthor. So I'd argue that Anti-Monitor definitely deserves a spot on this list. Number six on our list goes to the one and only Kang the Conqueror. This villain is so powerful that he's able to change the course of history with little to no effort. His ability to traverse through time gives him supreme insight and also the capability to appear in any time in the history of our universe, future, past, and present. He's a real contender for this list because although he's been defeated in the past, he was really only in a state of limbo and he never truly meets a final end. I mean. He's able to not only design the outcome of reality in most cases, but also just exist in any time he'd like. He once lived in ancient Egypt, and also the turn of the 20th century. The point is, Kang shows time and time again that he's capable of existing in multiple times throughout history, which I would argue could be a form of immortality. As Schrodinger's logic would go, Kang has and hasn't existed at every moment in history and the future. It would just be up to us to observe him, and well, good luck with that. All right, at number five, I'm putting Dormammu. Am I pronouncing that right? Another villain who's been around for countless millennia, possibly even millions of years. Dormammu proves to be powerful enough and durable enough to possibly be considered immortal. One piece of evidence is his clash with Agamotto, a spawn of one of the elder gods where Dormammu actually held his own. And for those of you who don't know, Agamotto easily contended against Galactus himself. And if that wasn't enough to suggest Dormammu's potential for immortality, he's also immune to aging and harm of any kind, physical or mystical. His powers have also been used for resurrection in the past, so it's fair to say that stopping this guy will be tough and arguably won't be permanent in any case. Okay, at number four, we're looking at Searcher, the thousand foot tall fire giant who can move stuff with his mind. Searcher was the sworn enemy of Odin and Thor and eventually destroys Asgard. At a few points, Searcher is imprisoned and banished, but never completely destroyed. Even after one of these instances where Searcher was transported to the sea of eternal light and frozen for all time, he still re-emerges after a Norwegian guy named Sven finds a medallion with connections to Searcher and subsequently turns into him. Thank you so much, Fen. And once again, when he's finally defeated by the Asgardians, he isn't really, since he just finds himself resurrected in a realm called Muspelheim. There's one instance where he's then beheaded by the Twilight Sword, another where he's basically destroyed by Odin who steals the eternal flame from him, but based on his track record, I'm not buying that any of these instances are the last of him. We're in the top three, folks, and at number three we have none other than Thanos. I know, yes, in the movies he was beheaded, but many argue that this isn't the end of him. Thanos is an ancient Eternal who was born on the planet Titan to his father Alars, also an Eternal. So, 
This dates Thanos back about a million years. And Thanos himself is an eternal, meaning we can at least deduct that he's immune to all disease and aging. In fact, Thanos was specifically banned by death from his realm, meaning it's almost confirmed that he can't be killed. So yeah, in the movie, spoiler alert, should have said that by now, we all saw him die. But by the laws of this character's storyline, this won't be the last we see of Thanos no matter how severe the injury appears to be. Number two, we've got the insatiable Galactus. This bad guy is hardly a villain anymore and more like a floating entity that feeds on the energy of life forms. Interdimensional and one of the oldest known beings to ever exist, Galactus always finds a way to bring evil to the cosmos. Even in his apparent death, he was replaced by Abraxas who basically took over in his absence. As much as Galactus is able to endure and despite his nearly infinite age, there are instances where he's weakened and put into submissive positions by other forces in the cosmos. The closest he comes to truly dying is when Thor and Galactus's attempted assault on the Black Winter goes horribly wrong and Thor turns on him, leaving him on the brink of death. A little too late, I'd say, considering you just let him consume five planets, Thor, but also good on you for killing Galactus sooner or later. But does Galactus ever die? Not really. Let's just hope that Abraxas doesn't come back again while he's gone. We don't want that. That guy's no good either. At number one, we have the Goblin Entity. This being was created at the point of the Big Bang, so one of the oldest on our list for sure. That said, the power of this villain has sustained over billions of years, and just like Galactus, it is driven by its insatiable hunger for energy. It's basically a giant, dark entity that moves through the cosmos, ingesting everything in its way. It is confirmed that the goblin entity cannot die, and if it were to be killed, similarly to everyone else on this list, it would find a way to regenerate. It seems what we're dealing with in this top 10 is a group of villains that just won't stop, no matter how hard you try to defeat them. But perhaps by exploring the villains with potential immortality, we're also exploring the deepest depths of true metaphorical evil found in the DC and Marvel universes. In that, in the real world as well, evil does always find its way back into the world. And all that can be done about it is temporary. Although those moments are sweet, where good wins, it's not long before we have to prepare for evil to return and rear its ugly head again. In its end, Moon Knight. Mark Spector is better known as the Vigilante Moon Knight. Once a mercenary, Mark Spector was left for dead in the desert, where he was revived by the moon god Khonshu. Appointed Khonshu's first and high priest, Moon Knight enacts justice to protect those who travel at night. Spectre also suffers from dissociative identity disorder, which has paved the way for his use of other identities, including millionaire Stephen Grant, a cat, and cab driver Jake Lockley. Since the early days, Mark has mostly worked alone, but he's also been a member of a few superhero teams, including the Avengers and Heroes for Hire. Recently, Mark discovered that he had a daughter named Deatrice with his longtime lover Marlene Arlone. But when Khonshu sensed Mephisto's plans for world domination, Mark left her to fight by his god's side and prevent that from coming true. When Khonshu succumbed to madness, however, Mark had to turn against him and help the Avengers defeat him. However, whenever Moon Knight would end up dying, Khonshu would just bring him back to life. So yeah, in essence, he's immortal. In at 9, Elongated Man. As his name suggests, the Elongated Man can stretch his limbs and body to superhuman lengths and sizes. There seems to be no limit to how far or wide he can stretch, but it's more difficult to control this ability the further he's actually stretched out. However, this also allows him to absorb bullets and then even just shoot them back by tightening his skin. He can also contort his body into various positions and sizes impossible for ordinary humans, such as being entirely flat so that he can slip under a door, or using his fingers to pick a conventional locks. He can also use it for a disguise by changing the shape of his face, although this is painful and difficult for him. But being able to stretch and move your body at will could also potentially allow you to stretch your life for longer than it should be. I mean, like, if his heart is giving out, theoretically, Ralph can't can just like force his heart to keep pumping by literally doing it himself right he can like sh shrink his heart and make it pump right so like it is partially possible or at least there is a slight chance that he could be immortal which is after all what this list is all about it's might be immortal right in at eight ghost rider jonathan johnny blaze aka ghost rider is an american motorcycle stunt performer and entertainer turned spirit of vengeance he was the son of famed stuntman barton blaze who tragically died during a stunt he became bound to zarathos and the spirit of vengeance after 
after making a deal with the demon Mephisto to spare the life of his surrogate father, Crash Simpson. Now, with the power to control Hellfire and to inflict pain on those deemed evil with his penance stare, Blaze seeks vengeance writing his Hell Cycle as the Ghost Rider. But like, being the spirit of vengeance, being in debt to Mephisto kinda makes you pretty immortal in my book. Like, in human form, Johnny has no possession of any superhuman powers or supernatural capabilities, but as Ghost Rider, he's the supernatural combination between experienced motorcyclist and Zarathos. As the Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze possesses a variety of supernatural powers at his disposal. However, any weapon crafted from heaven or like blessed can mutilate the Ghost Rider, which is the only way to decapitate and kill a spirit of vengeance. So without that, he's immortal. And it's Seven Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. Okay, I'm not actually gonna do that the whole time. And now I've also realized that the editor can put whatever they want over me saying that. Oh no. First appearing in Tales to Astonish number 13 in 1960, Groot is essentially a tree. He is a floral colossus from planet X. These beings are tree-like humanoids whose language can only be understood by listening to the stiffness of their larynx and the breaths in between each sentence. Which is one of the most creative things that we've seen done with a language. Sure, you can't speak it like Dothraki, but it's still pretty cool. Groot originally came to Earth to capture and study humans, but was destroyed by termites used by Leslie Evans. Zemnu made a duplicate of Groot by combining a human and a tree so it could fight Hulk. But that was destroyed as well. In the MCU, Groot sacrificed himself in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie saying we are Groot rather than I am Groot, but then was brought back using a leftover twig, which sprouted into baby Groot and more recently teen Groot. This guy has died and come back more times than me, so I'd say that's pretty damn impressive. I've come back a total of zero times, I think. I might have died once. I don't know. And it's six Ghost Rider. First appearing in Marvel Spotlight number 5, Johnny Blaze agrees to give his soul to the devil in order to save his father's life. The result of this is, at night, when he is around evil, his flesh becomes surrounded in hellfire and his head becomes a fiery skull. He rides a fiery motorcycle as well and can launch blasts of hellfire from his typically skeletal hands. There have been many incarnations of the Ghost Rider over the years. Johnny Blaze, Noble Kale, Danny Ketch, Alejandro Jones, and Robbie Reyes to name a few. And while being able to get shot, stabbed, or whacked and not feel anything can contribute to immortality, the fact that there will never not be a Ghost Rider serves as more of a way to secure immortality. I almost included Oliver Queen on the list because of what happened during the CW Crisis crossover, but I figured I'd not include characters based on what happened on the TV, I'd just do comics. And at 5, Dr. Fate. First appearing in More Fun Comics number 55, his origins and alter ego were not shown until More Fun Comics number 67, where it was revealed that Kent Nelson and his father went on an expedition to the Valley of Ur. While exploring, Kent's father finds a temple. They explore it further, and Kent opens the tomb of Naboo the Wise, reviving him from suspended animation and releasing a poisonous gas that kills his father. Taking pity on Kent, Naboo spends the next 20 years teaching him the ways of the sorcerer, giving him a mystical helmet, amulet, and cloak when he completes his training. Just like Ghost Rider, there have been many different people taking on the Doctor Fate title. Kent Nelson, Jared Stevens, Hector Hall, and Khaled Nassour, just to name a few. And gaining the powers of a freaking sorcerer is literally one of the coolest things that can ever happen. But the persona of Dr. Fate will always live on, always finding someone new to wear the helmet and use the title. So while the characters that wear the helmet may pass and change, the mantle of Dr. Fate will always have a home, which is really pure out. Wow, words. And at 4, Superman. First seen in Action Comics number 1, Superman has technically died before. But in the universe of comics, death is never really a true threat. The death of Superman storyline began in 1992 and lasted until late 1993, where it shocked fans to think that Superman was truly dead and that there was no returning. However, this is often cited as the event that sparked the whole nobody ever really dies in comic books theme, where no matter who dies, they will bring him back within the next few issues. While also being bulletproof and super strong, he he can fly, has heat vision and frost breath, and can basically do whatever he wants with no consequences. Yes, while it may be possible to kill him like they have in the past, Superman is considered the poster boy of comic books, and referred to as the first superhero by many. This is technically untrue because others like Zoro predate him and fit the same bill as Superman, but whatever. You can't kill the literal face of comics, especially when we have events like Blackest Night which bring back characters who even their creators forgot about. And a 3, Green Lantern. Whenever a Green Lantern dies, another creature worthy of a ring gets chosen. There is no way to ever really eradicate any Lantern core from existence, since the rings will just, you know, straight up go find a new host. There have also been plenty of Green Lanterns explored in the comics. Alan Scott, Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart, Jessica Cruz, John Diggle, plenty of men and women and aliens have gotten their hands on a green ring of power. But what if we were to wipe out every single Lantern at once? Like a bomb that is able to get them all since they were like at a con or something. Well if one ring managed to survive it would still find another host. 
host, so you'd have to destroy the rings as well. But unless you can literally do all of this at once, you'd be screwed. Because then they come for you because you just literally killed everyone. And at 2, Wolverine. This wannabe honey badger has slowly had his healing factor amped up over time. He used to take days to recover from a severe beating, as seen in the classic X-Men in Australia storyline in the 90s. But now you can drop an atom bomb on him and he can just get right back up. In fact, it was revealed that every time Wolverine dies, he goes to like this hellish world, where he has to fight a demon samurai for the right to return to life. Yeah, I don't get it either. Wolverine has also managed to regenerate his entire body from a single drop of blood after it landed on the crystal of Ultimate Vision and Uncanny X-Men Volume one annual number 11 in 1987. This also gave him incredible cosmic powers, which he abandoned and instead destroyed the crystal, killing Horde who was trying to take it for himself. Why would you do that? Which is pretty cool and one of the dopest things I've seen come from comics, but again, why would you do that? <laughs> Just tear him apart. God. Finally, in at number one, Mr. Immortal. How can I not finish this list off with the guy whose name is literally Immortal? First appearing in West Coast Avengers Volume 2, number 46 in 1989, Craig Hollis was visited by the entity known as Death Urge shortly after his birth and the death of his mother. This entity started urging Craig to do dangerous things, while his father thinks it's just an imaginary friend. Eventually, as Craig calls him Dirge, convinces Craig to set his house on fire and hide beneath it. This event kills his father and Dirge leaves. He gets put in foster care with an abusive father, but grows close to his foster sister. They fall in love, but is torn away when she offs herself. This causes Dirge to come back, and Craig asks him to kill him as well so that he can be with her. Dirge refuses, because he's just a dick. But this doesn't stop Craig, who tried to fulfill his wish by jumping off a building, only to realize he can't die. He uses his ability to become a superhero, and as his first outing as Mr. Immortal, he's shot and left for dead. He decided he needed a team to make better use of his abilities, so after putting an ad out on Craigslist, he founds the Great Lake Avengers. A superhero who can't die but wants to? That sounds pretty interesting to me. Number 10, Yara Floor. Yara Floor is destined to become the new Wonder Woman. At least that is what Future State would have us believe. For now though, in the Prime Earth continuity, she she is just coming into her own and being introduced to us as a hero, figuring out as well what that means for her as our Wonder Girl. Yara herself, like Wonder Woman before her, is also a demigod. In Future State we learned that while her mother was a mortal woman, her father was a Brazilian river god. Yara is an Amazonian in two ways, being from the Amazon and also being an Amazon of the Amazons. She is not from Themyscira like Diana, but instead from the Amazonian rainforest. We've seen the potential of Yara via her appearance in Future State but currently she is not at her full power levels just yet, as she doesn't have the same amount of experience as her future self. Like Diana, she is also a skilled combatant and has enhanced strength and speed due to her heritage. Number 9, Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill isn't someone you'd initially think of when you think of Immortal, but he is down with the Immortals of Asgard, and so I think we can include him too. Also add in the fact that he is a cyborg, and you have a Beta Ray Bill that just won't quit, in most cases at least. In his Thor form, Beta Ray Bill becomes one of the toughest heroes around, not only known for his strength, but also his durability. He is immune to disease and sickness, and becomes pretty much immortal in that form. Being at the level of strength and capability when it comes to his power levels also makes him one of the most powerful heroes in the Marvel Universe, even though he might not be the one that you think of first. So I'm really happy I put Beta Ray Bill on this list because I feel like we never talk about him enough. Poor Bill. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list, I have a lot more immortal, powerful heroes that I want to tell you about. So be sure to let us know you are loving it by giving this video a thumbs up. And shout out in the comments. Be like, part two, part two. Maybe we'll do a part two. Number 8, Orion. Orion is one of the new gods and also the son of Darkseid. But just because his dad is one of the greatest villains of all time when it comes to the DC universe doesn't mean that he can't be a hero, which is ultimately what Orion is, preferring to fight on the side of good. Although this doesn't mean that he never has conflicts with other superheroes in the DC universe, because that does happen from time to time, with Orion arguing that his approach to heroism in certain cases is superior. Orion is an amazingly skilled fighter and leader who is known for his super strength, durability and stamina. He also is immortal like his father, and because Darkseid has also been established as a constant in the DC universe, therefore invulnerable from ever being permanently defeated, we can discern that Orion likely has a similar thing going on, being descended from Darkseid as he is. In at number 7, The Phantom Stranger. This is another cosmic entity, and this one with no origin by design. Who is the Phantom Stranger? No one knows. The Phantom Stranger first debuted in Phantom Stranger number 1, all the way back in 1952. Who is he? Well, he is a mysterious figure who just kinda shows up when he is needed. Sometimes, not all the time. 
He also has abilities that can do what is needed most of the time. And of course, he is vague and cryptic, for sometimes not even he knows why he was drawn to an event. Because of how vague all of this was, not only has the Phantom Stranger been depicted very differently depending upon the writer, but he never really caught on too well. It's hard to get attached to a mystery person who shows up sometimes cuz. He did show up that one memorable issue though where Superman became a marine vampire. Never forget. Phantom Stranger, just cuz. Number six, Hercules. Hercules plays a decently large role in the Marvel Universe. He debuted in Journey into Mystery Annual number one back in 1965, but that's cuz his first appearance in Avengers Forever was later said to be that of an imposter. Hercules here is immortal because he is an Olympian god in this continuity, and thus gets all the perks, no being a doorman for him. Now, Hercules had a fake out death fairly recently at the time of this recording, where it looked as though the universe he was fighting in had ceased to exist, been destroyed. However, Amadeus Cho was able to discover that he was in fact still alive. Hercules is a good friend and rival to Thor, you know, like an anime. Hercules has also sacrificed his powers only to have them mysteriously return. Why? Who knows? Phantom Stranger. I know, different companies. Although now there may be a reason. That's what retcons are for. Number five, Iron Man. Going for a more unconventional form of immortality with Tony Stark. Now Tony is very frail, even by human standards. For a time he needed to be in his Iron Man suit just to survive. And despite all the enhancements he built into his suits, at one point fusing them to him permanently with nanites, he was still brutally killed by his friend Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. This was during Civil War II, and it was because he didn't want to arrest people before they did crimes. However, Tony did not die. No, he managed to AI himself and then build a new body, which has led to an interesting arc in his 2018 run about AI rights. You know, like those Voyager episodes. So Tony can be immortal, since he has found a way to transfer his consciousness into a digitized format, and hence make himself downloadable into robot bodies. However, every now and again, he must contend with the idea of, is he real? Does he have a soul? Are we just supposed to pretend he's real, Tony, and forget Civil War II happened? Probably. Number four, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is an interesting case because no matter the origin, there is always at least implications, if not the downright statement, that she is immortal, be she made of clay or the daughter of Zeus. Indeed, for a time, all Amazons on Paradise Island, later renamed Themyscira, were said to be immortal. Diana is a goddess and a warrior and a compassionate leader, walking an intriguing balance of kindness and pragmatism. That is hard for all writers to capture. And of course, she is a staple in some of those it's a dystopian future but Wonder Woman is still here stories. This is part of why some fans love pairing her with Superman. As while it varies, he is definitely more long lived than most mortals. Number three, Thor. Thor is meant to be immortal as he is a god from Asgard, but Thor keeps dying. Now he is meant to be extremely long lived, but for all intents and purposes immortal. However, Thor has been killed on more than one occasion, most recently by Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers. Thor's deaths are unique as well, for they play on his mythological origins. So instead of just vanishing, he goes to Valhalla or other realms and can continue to have adventures there. So there is the idea that even if he's gone, he's not fully gone and people know where to go get him. Number two, the Sentry. The Sentry is immortal. Don't ask how, they explain it, but just let it be. He took a serum that places molecules a second or two ahead in time. This activated a photosynthetic Superman style response, which allowed him to store energy and power himself. Immortal. No matter how it came about, the Sentry is immortal, and that is part of what makes him or made him so dangerous for a long time. At least in terms of the Sentry's existence, which only dates back to 2000. He was two entities, both the Sentry and the Void, who was a dark mirror to the Sentry. So if he existed forever, so too did the Void. It was part of why the Marvel Universe was made to forget about him, which was the crux of his retconned in origin story. At the time of this recording, his two halves have fused, reconciled. Where does it have to go from there? We shall see. And in at number one, Dr. Manhattan. John Osterman's whole life changed after the accident that transformed him into Dr. Manhattan. He was the Watchmen universe's only superpowered man, a being of pure energy who recreated himself outside of time and space and changed everything. Dr. Manhattan has only grown more and more distant from people and the world, largely because he can exist outside of time, seeing all of it simultaneously. He is completely immortal and omnipotent. And of course, there was Doomsday Clock, which brought the Watchmen and DC universes into proper contact with each other, and which essentially concluded with, there's gonna be more timelines and crises and a crossover. 100% worth a wait of two years. Not salty at all. Coming in at number 10, we have Steve Rogers, AKA Captain America. 
One of America's very first superheroes in the Marvel Universe during the Second World War, Steve Roger is notorious for dodging certain death after surviving his plane crashing into the frozen Atlantic Ocean through suspended animation. Even since becoming a modern hero, however, Cap still can't seem to stay dead, with the occasion where he seemed to be assassinated by crossbones actually resulting in his consciousness traveling through time. An inconvenient misadventure, but certainly less permanent than death. And given the fact that the Super Soldier Serum also seems to at least drastically slow Steve's aging, and Captain America just might be more immortal than you'd think. Coming in at number 9, we have Alec Holland, aka The Swamp Thing. The being that now calls itself Alec Holland is in reality the Avatar of the Green, an immortal being dedicated to protecting all nature and plant life on planet Earth that absorbed the memories and consciousness of a man named Alec Holland after a tragic chemical explosion in the swamps of Louisiana. As long as there exists some form of plant life on Earth, the Swamp Thing can regrow his body from this plant and transfer his consciousness, essentially ensuring that there'll always be an Avatar of the Green protecting Earth and that the memory of Alec Holland will truly never ever die. Coming in at number 8, we have Jean Grey, aka The Dark Phoenix. An X-Men storyline and character turn so iconic that they've tried turning it into a movie on two separate occasions, Jean Grey has long been one of the ideal hosts of the Phoenix Force, a fiery power that's one of the oldest in the Marvel Universe. This incredible force is capable of healing any injury that Jean receives, and is even capable of resurrecting her entirely if she's killed by unnatural means. Combined with her natural mutant abilities already making her one of the most powerful telepaths in the entire Marvel Universe, potentially rivaling even those of Professor X, and Jean Grey will be one of the most important mutants for many, many ages to come. In at 7, Supergirl. Last part, Josh talked about how Superman was basically unkillable ever since the death of Superman comic event, since he hadn't really been killed by Doomsday and instead was placed in Kryptonian stasis until he was able to be healed enough to return to being a superhero. However, the same thing can be said about Supergirl, okay? Kara Zor-El, Kal-El's older cousin who got sucked through a wormhole, making her quite a bit younger than her cousin when she got to Earth. Despite this, okay, Kal and Kara have the same Kryptonian ancestry, making them equal. So, if Superman is basically unkillable at this point, so is Supergirl. It's just basic math. Or like, weird comic book genetics math. Since he equals her, they would both be deemed unkillable or immortal. And I think that that's fairly cut and dry. Like, obviously they can be killed, but so can basically everyone on this list, okay? So let's just cut the semantics and just, like, ignore the nuance. <laughs> I just I just said that to a YouTube comments section. I wonder how effective that's gonna be. And at 6, Spider-Man. First officially referenced in 2005's official handbook of the Marvel Universe, Alternate Universes 2005 number 1, the sliding time scales is an attempt to quantify the passage of time in Earth-616 so that the characters don't age noticeably. Earth-616 featuring a sliding time scale means that rather than being fixed to any date in history, the modern era, which starts with the events of Fantastic Four number 1 and continues to the present, continuously slides forward in time. This period is roughly 13 years, which means that at any time in the present, the space flight that gave birth to the Fantastic Four always happened around 13, 14 years ago. Meaning that basically everyone in the Marvel Universe can't die of old age. Meaning that while stories like Spider-Man Reign among others take place in a time where Spider-Man is old, his main 616 version is pretty damn immortal. Especially because he's Marvel's most popular superhero, which means that this man has like a death grip on Marvel so hard that they cannot physically let him go. Halfway through into number 5, Wonder Woman. The Dark Knight's death metal story wrapped wrapped up early 2021 with issue number 7. And in that issue, and the issue before, we see Wonder Woman at her most powerful, in a godlike form that's even more powerful than a god. As the comic book puts it, quote, She has been a god before, but at this moment, she's more. At this point, she has ascended past godhood and can see all of time and all realities. She sees every Earth's timeline, and she faces off against the Batman who laughs in his most powerful form. This fight is so intense that they literally hit each other through time itself. Diana here is also charged with anti-crisis energy, a connective force that links all history and all lives as one story. Then, she moves on to become one of the hands that creates the multiverse going forward, with no walls and greater possibilities. So she aids in creating the future state story, which we see in the next issues, and that was seemingly the centerpiece of DC 2021. So, uh, Wonder Woman becoming a god and remaking the universe? 
sounds pretty immortal if you ask me. And at four, Mr. Fantastic. In addition to the whole sliding time scale thing, which actually starts with him, making him immortal as well, Reed Richards' abilities also make him quite powerful. Mr. Fantastic possesses the ability to convert the mass of his entire body into a highly malleable state at will, which is what allows him to stretch. However, this also gives him the ability to absorb bullets and make himself more dense. Basically, all the reasons why Elongated Man would be immortal like I explained earlier. But the reason Reed has a leg up on Ralph is because of his son. Franklin Richards is one of, if not the most powerful being in the entire Marvel Universe, even as an infant boy. This guy came to the present from the future and made Galactus his herald. Yeah, this dude made Galactus his b and Mr. Fantastic's kid being somehow the most overpowered thing in the universe, there's no way that he would let his father die. If he wanted to, he could just like blink and his father would be resurrected. That's some Omega level shit. Like he is like a Zeta level mutant, okay? It's insane. There's no way that this guy is dying. There's no way his dad is dying. I'll save Franklin Richards though for another list because I'm gonna need more numbers if there is one. Getting close to the end in number three, Batman. Batman is possibly immortal for the same reason that Spider-Man is, in a way. Well, at least like the whole popularity thing. Probably even more so because there is no way that they would kill off Batman in the main continuity. They may have other timelines or Earths where Batman dies, but never in the main continuity will they pull a move this big, okay? His plot armor is what makes him immortal. It doesn't matter if Batman has been a thing for over 80 years, he will always be young and immortal, at least in our world. And even if Bruce does die, someone takes over the Batman mantle, and and people commonly see the one who takes over as the proper Batman since the public doesn't know that Bruce being dead means that Batman is dead, but you know, whatever. Honestly though, Batman would end up killing death if the story needed it, and honestly there would be no question in people's minds. They'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. In the comments of times Batman embarrassed his villains, everyone seems to agree with me that Batman's greatest power isn't his money or his courage, but instead the plot armor given to him because he's DC's biggest money maker. But ultimately, in a number two, Sentry. Sentry is an absolute absolute powerhouse, so it's no surprise that he's basically immortal, okay? Even, like, any threat this dude will take on. Sentry has even fought and beaten Ares, which is already impressive, but how he did it is even better. Sentry used to be a part of Norman Osborn's Avengers, who went to Asgard in an attempt to lay siege and claim it, because, you know, it's Norman Osborn's Avengers. However, the Marvel version of the Greek God of War didn't like that idea, so after he learned of Osborn's intentions, he came down to kill the Green Goblin. But Ares did not anticipate the absolute powerhouse that is Sentry. Sentry's monster arms. He picked him up and tore him in half. Okay? Like how the absolute living hell did this man tear a Greek god in half? He absolutely obliterated the god of war without breaking a sweat. And if that doesn't show you the sheer power of Sentry and how overpowered Marvel thinks that Superman is, then nothing will actually show you at this point. You're a lost cause. But yeah, I feel like that makes him immortal. And finally, in at number one, The Flash. Technically speaking, the comic version of Barry Allen survived Crisis on Infinite Earths, despite everyone believing him to be dead, since he returned to the Speed Force after turning into the lightning bolt that gave him his powers to begin with. That's also an interesting story. But after transforming into pure lightning, traveling through time and space, and striking himself, Barry was sent back into the Speed Force, and later escapes and comes back into our world in the Flash Rebirth storyline. So technically, he survived the comic version of Crisis because he didn't die. Okay, he just he just transcended dimensions, which is a damn testament to how the Flash will never really die, okay? If he can have a very public and very impactful sacrifice to save literally all of reality and then just be brought back because he just went into the Speed Force like some sort of speedster Valhalla, it just makes me think that if any speedster dies, they'll just go into the Speed Force and then be able to be brought back. And in reality, every character is immortal if the writers want to bring them back for whatever reason. They will always find a way. Coming in at number 10 today is Mr. Immortal. What better way to Start off a list of immortal heroes. Mr. Immortal possesses the ability to automatically resurrect and heal from any fatality that he ever suffers. The resurrection usually occurs immediately, and it appears that it stopped him from aging completely. He has recovered from being blasted, squished, losing air to his lungs, being crushed, blown up, infected, losing his head, blasted by radiation, and incinerated. The Death Urge, who Mr. Immortal grew up with, has stated that Mr. Immortal is fated to be alive to 
see the end of the universe, eventually being the sole survivor of the universe. Then at the end, he would learn the quote grand secret that will reveal itself at the end of all things. It's later revealed that this grand secret is merging with the sentience of the cosmos, surviving beyond the end of time and moving on into the next iteration of everything, just like Galactus does. Franklin Richards is also said to have this same destiny, but according to the one below all, Franklin is the quote appointed prince and Mr. Mortal is merely Franklin's backup just in case Franklin happens to pass away. Number 9. The Eternals Way back in the day, the Celestials came to Earth when proto-humans began to emerge, meaning around 2 to 5 million years ago. That's a long frickin' time. The Celestial first host performed genetic experiments on those early humans, resulting in three groups. The Immortal and Superior Eternals, the pretty grotesque and monstrous Deviants, and just plain Jane regular humans like you and me. The Eternals, aka Homo Immortalis were basically created to defend the planet Earth, specifically from the Deviants and to serve the Celestials. They became somewhat silent defenders of Homo sapiens, secluding themselves and rarely directly engaging with us. They built super impressive cities like Olympia, Titanos, Oceana, and Polaria, and their names have become intertwined with heroes throughout ancient history. And they are all immortal, being reborn if they ever actually bite the dust. Hence the Homo Immortalis name. An average eternal is intertwined with cosmic energy and can lift about 15 tons without using any form of telekinesis, but a few are able to lift up to 100 tons. Other Eternals specialize in different powers like telepathy and telekinesis, and all Eternals have the ability to join with one another to form the Unimind made of light, mind, and just pure energy. Number 8. Nightcrawler Kurt Wagner was first introduced in Giant Sized X-Men number 1 in April 1975 with the mutant ability to biophysically displace himself into the brimstone dimension, travel through it with a subconscious sense, and then return back to our dimension in a different location. Essentially, teleporting. Now this all happens so fast it's almost instant and it's always accompanied by the signature BAMF sound. Through his unique physiology he gains a few extra abilities as well like a prehensile tail, micro suction hands and feet, flexible bone structure, and he can also camouflage himself bending light using the brimstone dimension. But what a few might not know is that he is actually immortal, thanks to the fact that he sacrificed his soul in heaven to come back to life. This means he cannot be taken out by any natural means, and if he was taken out by anything else, the mutant resurrection protocols got him covered too. Which is good, because I never want to lose this legendary blue mutant. Coming in at number 7, we have Ben Grimm, aka The Thing. As the physically strongest member of the Fantastic Four with an intimidating appearance to boot, the Thing is respected throughout the Marvel world for always having his family's back, and even being capable of standing up to someone as powerful as the Hulk when the need arises. Ben's change into a being made out of a mysterious rock-like substance also had some unexpected side effects, however, such as the fact that while in Thing form, he never ages. This is offset slightly by the fact that Ben is capable of appearing human for one day a year due to the tinkering of the rest of the Fantastic Four, but aging only one day a year extends your lifespan dramatically, and combine that with all of the near-death situations or universal collapses that the Fantastic Four have avoided together, and Ben Grimm definitely earns the title of being practically immortal. Coming in at number 6, we have the Incredible Hulk, aka Bruce Banner. Considering the Hulk's most popular and critically acclaimed series of the last decade was literally called The Immortal Hulk, obviously the big green guy earns a spot on this list. Built around the twist that the Incredible Hulk has always been immortal and that Bruce Banner first died during the original Gamma Bomb explosion and has been constantly resurrecting ever since, this series took the Hulk into a wild new body horror direction with all gamma-powered beings apparently being connected to the one below all in a way that allows them to circumvent even the natural process of death, the Hulk is apparently a problem that can never be permanently solved. Coming in at number 5, we have Kevin Connor, aka Starbrand. Taking his name from the literal star brand he possesses, Kevin is one of the most powerful heroes to ever be called an Avenger, gaining his powers during an Earth-wide cosmic flash known as the White Event. 
Gaining the ability to control and manipulate energy at a scale only limited by his imagination, Starbrand is incredibly physically powerful and capable of healing any wound on both himself or any of his allies. Starbrand is so powerful that he's one of the few beings to ever kill a Beyonder, destroying one of the multiversal beings when the Marvel Universe was collapsing in a massive explosion, yet somehow reappearing unharmed once the Marvel Universe was restored. And if you can heal from an explosion at the end of all existence, I think you might be able to survive pretty much anything. Coming in at number 4, we have Thor Odinson, the God of Thunder. While several Marvel and DC superheroes have godlike powers, Thor is one of the very few that counts as a literal god. Having protected both Midgard and Asgard for thousands upon thousands of years, Thor has already had eons worth of adventures by the time we were introduced to the character in the comics. And according to all the storylines that feature an older All-Father Thor, he'll continue to outlive the rest of the Avengers by thousands and thousands of years more. With even the Norse apocalypse of Ragnarok focusing on the concept of renewal and rebirth, Thor is a heroic god that will likely never truly see a permanent end. Coming in at number 3, we have the notoriously durable Wolverine. When Wolverine was first introduced in the comics, his healing ability was just a quirk that made him a more intimidating warrior. Any cuts or bruises would just quickly become a non-issue to him. But as time went on and Wolverine became a more popular character, his healing abilities as a mutant became one of his most defining features, even more so than his iconic claws. Wolverine's healing abilities, combined with his indestructible adamantium skeleton, have been shown to be so great over the years that he's even been able to withstand the full force of a nuclear bomb, and getting his entire body ripped in half by the Ultimate Hulk. Even in the few instances where someone has been able to officially kill Wolverine, he somehow found his way back to the land of the living through time travel or magical means, ensuring that Wolverine will live on to fight another day. Coming in at number 2, we have the one and only Superman. Perhaps the most iconic superhero of all time, Superman is also where giant death of a hero events hit their peak, with the huge 90s cultural moment of the death of Superman. After a grueling multi-issue battle through the streets of Metropolis that saw Superman giving up his life to defeat the unstoppable killer Doomsday, it appeared that the Man of Steel was dead for good. However, after a long storyline that saw multiple imposter Supermen show up, Superman was shown to have not truly died, but merely been placed in Kryptonian stasis until he was able to be healed enough to resume being a superhero. Even after the beating of a lifetime from a complete monster, Superman remained unstoppable and has remained unkillable to this day. And finally, coming in at our top spot, we have the Venom Symbiote. In a potential alternate future seen in the one-off story called Venom, The End, it was revealed that the most famous symbiote in the Marvel Universe has a longer shelf life than you'd expect. Keeping his host Eddie Brock alive for hundreds of years past a normal human lifespan, this story explores the symbiote finally letting go of its oldest friend and becoming the sole organic being left in a universe slowly dying to an artificial intelligence plague known as the God Mind. The symbiote wound up being the very last living thing before the universe was reset, showing that the most immortal creature in the Marvel Universe might just be a pile of black goo. No offense, Venom. At number 10, we have Annihilus. Using the cosmic control rod, Annihilus ameliorates his own well-being, spending most of his time trying to find ways to make himself, yes, immortal. The rod is known to have almost limitless capabilities, so his efforts aren't in vain, as he has found ways to fend off disease, slowing down cellular degeneration, otherwise known as aging, and warding off heat and cold. He also uses it to fly super fast, which is another plus. The only reason why Annihilus is back at number 10 for me is that he seems to need the cosmic control rod to achieve immortality. And even while he has it, he's known to be liable to make big mistakes due to his paranoia that others are going to try and snatch it from him. Remember kids, the real superpower is up here. Number 9 goes to Apocalypse. This villain, often facing off against the X-Men, originated in ancient Egypt, giving hints that he's capable of existing for hundreds of years at a time without meeting death. Yeah, so he's also known to have surprised 
supreme control over his body from an atomic level, being capable of growing in size and density whenever he chooses, and adapting to his environment and fighting off disease. Not only that, but he's immune to aging. Aging, again. So when Apocalypse was finally defeated by Cable, he wasn't actually killed and regenerated in a tomb in Aqaba. So there you have it. it. Seems like this guy will always be around. Our best bet is to keep him at bay for a while before he inevitably comes back, possibly repeating this process for eternity. All right, at number eight we have Mephisto, a demon creature who presents similarly to how humans view Satan. And yes, he did this to manipulate our singular views of evil through our tale of Satan the fallen angel. Regardless, Mephisto is known to be so powerful that he does not need food or water or even oxygen to survive. He even has abilities to regenerate in the instances that he is damaged going as far as regrowing limbs. And he can also see his own future if he so chooses. So even if something was coming his way that could somehow usurp his seemingly immortal powers, he would see it coming and put a stop to it before it could reach him. Mephisto proves to be a threat throughout the ages and although he does face certain limitations to his powers and influence, this list isn't about power but about immortality. So there you go. Number seven, The Thing. Ben Grimm's first year roommate in university just happened to be this brilliant young scientist by the name of Reed Richards. These two became best friends. After the two graduated, Ben joined the Air Force becoming a pilot and an astronaut. Now helping out his buddy Reed with a prototype spaceship, Ben volunteered as its pilot. And alongside Reed, Susan Storm and her brother Johnny Storm, the four were bombarded with radiation and they all gained superpowers. Of all of them though, Ben drew Drew the short end of the stick, with his skin becoming orange and rocky, turning him into an extremely durable and extremely strong monstrous thing. On the other hand, though, Ben was now the only member of the Fantastic Four who gained immortality, being unable to age at all. Eventually, thanks to Johnny Storm, the thing did get the ability to return back to his human form, but only once a year. This is the only time that he actually ages, and it's only by one day every year. If he chooses not to become human that year, then he does not age one day. Basically, the thing will live for a very, very, very long time, if not just forever. Number six, the Hulk. The gamma powered green goliath known as the Hulk has been around for a long time. And ever since he showed up, there are only a small handful of people who have ever been able to stop him without using some kind of magic or reality warping. His infinite strength has a lot to do with that. A strength that grows based on his anger and has never ever really reached a cap, allowing him to destroy entire planets, be a threat to the entire galaxies, and being able to shake the entire multiverse with his punches. It also has a lot to do with his basically limitless dynamic durability, which has allowed him to survive attacks from enchanted weapons, powerful blasts of energy, stronger than ground zero nuclear explosions, the Human Torch's Nova Blast, and he could stand up to forces that could crush adamantium and destroy entire planets. We already knew that the Hulk persona would come out to stop Bruce Banner from ever passing on, and that the Hulk himself is practically unable to be damaged and heals very quickly if he is, but now, thanks to a Mortal Hulk, we know that the Hulk actually, literally, cannot cease to live. Coming back from the below place through green doors anytime he does happen to just bite the dust, which is never. Number five, Ares. As the son of both Zeus and Hera, Ares is the Olympian god of war. Now, unlike a lot of others on this list, Ares has acted as a villain from time to time, which you would expect from a god of war. He's tried to conquer Olympus several times, usually being stopped by his half brother, who we will talk about in just a moment. Now, growing tired of Zeus's rule, Ares retired from his position in Olympus and made his way to Earth. Earth to raise his son Alexander, aka Phobos, who is also immortal. His first real heroic Marvel moment came when he returned to Olympus to face Amatsu Mikobashi, the Chaos King. Since then, he has actually joined up as one of Iron Man's Avengers, even staying on the team when Norman Osborn took over. Eventually, though, he kind of passed away at the hands of the Sentry, who ripped him in half, but he just went straight to Elysium, only to return as a fighter in the Contest of Champions, and after that, he went back to Earth and became one of the champions of Europe. Somehow, 
though, he was taken out by the Punisher fairly recently, but he will probably absolutely return as he is a god. Number four, Hercules. Hercules is the son of Zeus, sky father and supreme ruler of the gods of Olympus, and Alcmena, a mortal woman who lived over 3,000 years ago. Athena, the goddess of wisdom, arranged for her father Zeus to have a half mortal son to be the world's champion. Zeus seduced Queen Alcmena, pretending to be her husband, King Amphitryon, and Alcmena gave birth to baby Hercules. Now, as an adult demigod in ancient Greece, Hercules achieved worldwide fame, or worldwide fame, best known for his 12 labors. As the Olympian god of strength, Hercules' strength is unlimited, making him one of the strongest and most powerful heroes in the Marvel Universe. As an infant, he was breastfed by his stepmother, Hera, queen of the Olympian gods, which increased his already demigod physiology to godlike levels. Hercules possesses the superhuman physical attributes of an Olympian god, but interestingly, some of his powers are superior to the vast majority of his race. But like all of them, he's immortal. Number three, Snowbird. Naria's origins trace back to ancient times when the Inuit gods of the north battled the mystical great beasts for the fate of the world. Ultimately, both parties were exiled from Earth, and as such, the Inuit gods sought to create an agent to prevent the beast's return. To that end, Nelvana, goddess of the northern lights, mated with a human. With the midwifery assistance of Sarsi mystic Michael Two Young Men, Nelvana gave birth to a daughter. Naria. Two young men bound the infant to the lands of Canada, allowing her to assume human form. However, she would weaken if she left Canada's borders. Two young men raised the rapidly maturing Naria as his own daughter, and both were soon recruited into Alpha Flight as Shaman and Snowbird. And Snowbird, being a god, like Hercules, is immortal. Number two, Monkey King. A crime lord self-styled himself as a modern day quote, Monkey King. He was tricked by a rival into attempting to steal the original Monkey King's staff. Now in the cave where the staff was held, he encountered the spirit of the original Monkey King, Sung Wu Kong, who impressed by his audacity, let him take the staff and at least some of the original's power on the condition that he would be judged. If he was good, he would be allowed to go free, but if his heart was weighed down by evil, he would be cast down into the eighth city of hell. Hell. Now, being a crime lord, he was judged evil. He was cast down where he was trapped for years and years and years until one of the hammers of the worthy that was created during the original sin created a hole that allowed many demons, including himself, to escape. Having seen the error of his ways, he now dedicated himself to trying to atone for his past deeds and hunting down any other demons that also escaped alongside him with the powers of immortality. Number one, Deadpool. With powers originating from Wolverine, Wolverine's genetic mutation, only stronger, Wade Wilson, aka Deadpool, is a product of the Weapon X program, making him not only pretty difficult to take down, but also pretty difficult to defend against. But through his time, he's managed to become even more capable. At one point in the comics, Deadpool becomes infatuated with death, as in Mistress Death. This is the same death that the Mad Titan Thanos is also in love with. Now, because of this little weird love triangle and Thanos being a big grumpy jealous boy, he decides to quote, gift old old Wade Wilson with immortality, meaning preventing him from ever being able to fully be with death. In reality, he just vowed to return Deadpool to life no matter what it took if he ever managed to actually pass away. Coming from Thanos, that's pretty much the same as immortality because Thanos is Thanos and he will do whatever he wants to do. But even without that, Deadpool's healing factor renders him basically immortal as he no longer ages, can live and control his body without his head attached, is highly resistant to foreign chemicals, immune to all diseases, telepathic attacks, and possessions. He's a master assassin and has the power of breaking the fourth wall, which in a way gives him almost godhood-like abilities in comic books. 